you already understand the difference between numerical variables and categorical variables. Categorical variables are uh, they occur when we divide things into categories. So for example, suppose we take gender and we say there are males and females or if you take color and say there is red, blue and green or you may take regions of the country and say north, south, east, west and so on and so on. These are all categorical variables. They don't have numeric values. All you're doing is just classifying things into different categories. In R, categorical variables are called factors. So at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to distinguish between categorical and numeric variables or numeric objects. And there's also the important distinction between unordered categorical variables or unordered factors and ordered factors. And when you have categorical variables in R, you could have these categorical variables created with default labels and we'll understand what that is shortly. And you'll also look at how you can change those default labels to things which are more friendly. And then we'll create ordered factors, learn how to create them and ordered factors with explicit levels and implicit levels. And then we'll identify where situations with variables that have numerical values might actually not be numerical variables and may need to be treated as categorical variables or factors. So these are all the things we are going to look at in this lesson. Of course, at this point, these things may not make too much sense to you, but in 15 minutes, that will not be the case. Okay, so let's look at categorical variables. You already understand that when you have variables, you have things called as nominal variables, which means you're just putting things into names, assigning names to objects. So those are categorical categories without any ordering. So for example, gender is uh, you know, female, male. That's it. There's nothing uh, to say one is greater than the other or one is less than the other, right? They're just two different categories. They're all uh, in some sense. There's no ordering between them, okay? Or you could say color or you could say country. Uh, all of these are variables, meaning some, some variables could have these values. So for example, I might have a variable called uh, gender in some data frame and the value that you put there might be female or male depending upon uh, a particular row in the data frame representing a female or male person. Similarly, you may have many parts in a data frame and each part may have an associated color and that might be one of the columns and within the column you will have the values red, blue or green depending on what are the possible allowed values. Similarly, you may have data about a lot of people and one of the columns in the data frame may be the country to which a particular person belongs and the name of the country would be, uh, let's say, Brazil, uh, Gabon, Chad, Seychelles, etc. Okay, so all of these could be values of specific variables or columns. But there's no implied ordering whatsoever. Just the, the label country itself doesn't have any ordering. But of course, if you uh, looked at the countries themselves, and if you looked at the, let's say, the land area of the country or the population of the country, they might be ordering. But that's not what we are talking about. We are simply talking about the category itself and there is no particular ordering. On the other hand, we've got ordinal categories. That is, things which are divided into categories, but there is an implied ordering. So, for example, let's say I've got a variable called salary. And instead of dealing with the actual numeric values of salaries, I have categorized these salaries into three different levels, high, medium, low, that's it. Okay, so we are not dealing with the numerical variable at this point. The variable after this conversion will not be numeric, it's just categories. But there is an implied ordering within the category, right? So we know that high is greater than medium is greater than low. Similarly, you may have performance levels and the performance levels may have values like excellent, good, average, low, poor, etc. So once again, these are merely categories because these are not numbers, but there is an implied ordering. Okay, so when you have categorical variables, there are two types of categorical variables. One is called nominal, which is just the variable, uh, the categories are just names. There is no ordering. The other is ordinal, where the categories are there, but there is also an implied ordering among the categories. So as I had mentioned earlier, categorical variables are called factors in R. And as you can already see, both of these are categorical variables. Nominal and ordinal are both categorical and both of them are called factors, but nominal variables will be considered as unordered factors and ordinal variables are considered as ordered factors. 
So let's first consider unordered factors. So first let's consider this vector of strings f m f f m f. So this is a vector of four character string values and uh, of course right now it's just a vector of character strings. We want to convert this into a factor. Uh, so now we use this function called as dot factor. This is just an inbuilt function in R. So you say as dot factor and you pass gender to it. What it's going to do is is going to give you a result which is a vector of factors. And I'm giving it the name gender underscore f. This is just a name I made up. You know, just because I said underscore f, it didn't magically become a factor or anything. I used underscore f just because I know that it's going to store factor values. Okay, this is just a name I made up. There's nothing, no big significance to the underscore f. Okay, so now the results are stored there. And then if I type in gender, I'm going to see, of course, this is the first value, the gender, the first variable. It's a vector of strings, as we expect. But if I type gender underscore f, that is supposed to be the vector of factors. And notice the result here. You see f, f, m, f. It's very different from this, right? Because here you see quotes. The values are surrounded within quotes to tell us that, that those are character strings. Whereas here, you don't see any quotes. So clearly, it's these are not character strings. And the next line of the output clarifies for us what's going on. It's saying levels f, m. And the levels is what is tipping us off to the fact that these are factors. Factors have levels. Right? That is to say, these are the cat different categories that are allowed. That's what you're seeing here. So it's telling you these are the values and these are the different applicable or allowed categories for this particular variable. Of course, in this case, it has turned out that there are only two categories or two levels, F and M, and both the levels have shown up in our results. It is perfectly possible that there may actually be four or five levels, and in the actual data, only two or three of them show up. That's possible. Right? That is why when you display a factor variable, it will give you the value of the variable, but it will also tell you what are the different applicable levels. Let's take another example here. We are going to look at a different function for creating factors. So again, we've created the same vector of strings containing genders. And this time, we are using the function called factor, not as dot factor. We are using a function called factor. And of course, we are assigning the result again to gender f. So I'm saying factor gender, which is the vector that we just created. And I'm saying the levels for this factor are f and m. OK, again, you may say, well, that's obvious because those are the only two values here. Well, it's possible that there may be many other levels that are not showing up in the data. So it's useful to explicitly specify the levels. More importantly, what we're going to do is to associate the labels with the levels. OK, so we are saying with the level uh, with the uh, level F, associate the label female and with the level M, associate the label male. OK, now this is then this makes this data a little more friendly. When you print out the, uh, let's say, a graph, you create a graph with this variable, uh, it'll uh, display female and male instead of just, just F and M. Many times what happens is that the values in the data frames, uh, in data frames or in data sets for factors are very cryptic. And if you use them as they are, then sometimes your output output becomes pretty difficult to understand. So to make your output easy to understand, we try we try and associate labels with the different levels of the factor variables. Okay. So this by giving levels equal something, labels equal something, we are able to associate labels with each individual level of the factor. Okay. So now if I type gender underscore f, I'll of course see f f m f female, female, male, female, right? That's because this F has been associated with female, M has been associated with male. So when I print out the factor, I now see the labels that we, the friendly labels that we associated. More importantly, uh, it, of course, it's also going to show you the levels, levels, female, male, okay? So the, the difference between what we saw in the earlier slide with the as dot factor is we said just use the values themselves as the labels. Here we are saying, well, he, these are the levels, 
but I want you to associate different labels with the levels. We got more control over the labels. So that's what the factor function allows us to do. Now let's take a look at ordered factors. Right. So earlier the female male example that we had, those were unordered factors. Let's look at ordered factors where there's an implied ordering. So therefore, let's consider this vector of salary levels, low, low, medium, etc., etc. And of course, the, the, the applicable values are low, medium and high. Uh, let's assume that those are the only three applicable values. Okay. So now I'm converting salary underscore F uh, by uh, just doing factor salary. I could have said as dot factor salary. It would have been the same thing. Right, I'm converting this vector into a factor variable and storing the result in salary underscore f. Subsequently, if I go and print salary underscore f, I didn't show that command, then you see the values low, medium, high, etc. are displayed. Okay, and these are factors because you clearly see there is no there are no quotes around the values. So that worked fine. Uh, and this is just a factor and it says okay, the levels are high, low, medium. Fine. Okay, but this is not what we want, right? Because this tells you that this is an unordered factor, right? Because when you just have the levels displayed, there's no difference here with what we did in the earlier slide with male and female, right? So this is just unordered factor. If I just say factor, I'm going to get an unordered factor, but we want this to be an ordered factor. There's a function to do that and that function is called ordered. Okay, so I'm saying salary underscore ordered underscore one. I'm just giving a variable name and I'm saying is ordered salary, right? So I'm taking the original vector, applying it, applying on it the ordered function and this will give me an ordered factor, but there is going to be a problem, right? So if I see the result, nothing untoward here, the next line is going to tip us off. So you know, when you display an ordered factor, because there is an implied ordering, it's going to show you that ordering. So here it's saying the levels are high, low and medium with high being less than low being less than medium. Oops, isn't it low, medium, high? So there's something wrong here. The reason the system took this to be the level is that we did not, when we said ordered salary, we did not tell the system what is the ordering between the applicable values of low, medium and high. Right? It didn't know that low is less than medium is less than high because these are just character strings and the system will not make any assumption about what the implied ordering is. It's up to us to tell it what the ordering is. Okay, So when we don't tell it explicitly how to order, it is just ordering it based on alphabetical ordering. And that is why it thought high is less than low is less than medium because that's our alphabetical ordering. Okay, So that's not what we want. So when we create ordered factors, we need to be a little more explicit about the ordering. Okay, so here we are showing an example, a form of the function ordered, where we're saying ordered salary comma levels equals C low, medium, high. So now we are telling it these are the levels. Low is the lowest level, medium is the next, and high is the next. So we are telling it explicitly, this is our ordering. Now, if I do salary ordered, I see, of course, the first line is no different. The next line tells us, okay, this is the way it's supposed to be. Low is less than medium is less than high. And if this happened because we did this, because we said levels is low, medium, high, that's why this happened correctly. Okay, so that's the benefit of using the ordered function and explicitly specifying the levels. So definitely, this is a lot better. There's one other point that you need to be really, really careful about and cognizant of. And that is sometimes when something is a number, it displays as a number, but it's not supposed to be treated as a number. So let's take this example. There's this file called autompg.csv and we read the data. We say auto is read.csv, autompg.csv. Okay, so we are reading the file. So the data from that data file gets into this variable called auto. And this has a variable inside of it called cylinders. Okay, so let's find out what kind of values are contained in the variable cylinders. So we can say class auto dollar cylinders. Now you can always use the class function 
to find out what kind of value a variable contains. Of course, you can also use the str function as you have seen earlier. I can do class uh, auto dollar cylinders and it's saying, well, these are integer values. Okay, and then of course, we, we may want to see what are the unique values of uh, cylinders contained in the data set. I can always say unique auto dollar cylinders and I see that the unique values are 4, 3, 5, 6, 8. Right, the reason it came out is 4, 3, 5, 6, 8 and not 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. It's simply because that's the order in which it appeared within the data frame. Okay. Now, let's say for whatever reason, we don't want to treat this number of cylinders really as a number. Okay. Let's say that in our application that we really don't want to treat these as numbers in the sense that adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing these values doesn't make any sense. Suppose that was the scenario and we wanted R to not treat it as a number but just treat it as a factor. Meaning it looks like a number but please don't treat it as a number, treat it as a factor. Okay. So here again I did unique auto dollar cylinders. I got 4, 3, uh, 5, 6, 8 and here I'm converting that into a factor. Right. I'm saying of course I could have just said auto dollar cylinders is assigned the value factor auto dollar cylinders. I could have done that. Right. And again, notice how I'm referring to a particular column of the data frame, auto dollar cylinders. Right. I'm just referring to a column within the data frame. And uh, I'm saying replace the value of the column by the result of this function, factor auto dollar cylinders. Okay. That is, take auto dollar cylinders, apply the factor function on it. We know that the different levels are 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. Let's assign more friendly labels to those levels. I didn't have to do this. Then the labels would simply have been 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. And uh, that may not be very friendly, right? Because just the numbers 3, etc. may not make too much sense. There may be other variables within the same data frame that also have similar values. And we want to associate more friendly labels. We're saying, okay, I want to call the labels as 3 cylinder, 4 cylinder, etc. Okay, so we've done here, we have associated uh, labels. And now notice that after doing this, after applying the factor function, class auto dollar cylinders tells us that it's actually now a factor. Okay. Earlier, when we did that, we saw that it was integer because the values were integers. Now we've converted that into a factor, right? Now it would be a factor no matter whether we assigned friendly labels or not. If you didn't assign any labels, then the values inside would still be displayed as three, four, five, six, eight, but it would still be considered as a factor. It won't be considered as a numeric. Okay. So again, I can see head auto dollar cylinders to see some initial values. And then it is showing me that the values now are displayed as four cylinder, three cylinder, four cylinder, etc. Now this levels should be on the next line. And it's saying these are the different possible levels.